And now about the programming custom function, that means the programming part two numerical method. Uh, here I provide some useful docs on numerical methods because this might be uh, a bit of a steep curve, a uh, learning curve for you to write the function for numerical methods. So I, uh, and then it's, this is not actually the content of the course, the numerical methods. I think maybe some of you have uh, some ex uh, have learned about numerical methods, but uh, maybe some of you have forgotten that you've learned about them, these numerical methods. But uh, I choose to highlight it here in the course because this is when we actually need to use programming. So far what you've done uh, in the previous assignments, mostly just learning the basics, learning the fundamentals, but then you don't probably understand yet why you need to do all these things, why you need, you need to code it when you can actually just use your calculator to uh, solve the problem for you. But uh, numerical methods is where we actually need to use coding because like say your numerical method requires uh, you to solve an equation maybe a thousand times, two thousand times, there's no way that you'd be able to do it by hand in a, in a feasible amount of practical amount of time. Um, this involves finding the area under a curve when you integrate a function, when you integrate an equation, I think you've studied calculus before, integration and differentiation. When you integrate a function uh, or an equation, then uh, you can integrate it analytically, or you can use, um, let's say you can use a numerical method to get the area of the function for you instead of integrating it numerically, uh, integrating it analytically. I'm not sure whether you're following me on that or not. So, let's say we use a simple function like, a simple equation, like y equals to x squared plus two. You know that this is a quadratic equation, right? So it looks something like if we just look at the positive side, I know there's also the negative side where this is two. Thank you. So here, let's say we want to get the area under the curve, like here, from zero until let's say five. Now we can get the area under the curve by integrating it. We just say y equals to from zero to five. And I think you can integrate this, it's quite simple, right? It's just I don't, I don't, I, this is not a math, math class, so I'm not going to go down too deep into this. So this is easily uh, integratable. Once you can integrate it, oops. once you can integrate it, means that you get the area beneath the curve. You get this area beneath the curve from zero to five. And then um, this is, this one can be done analytically means that you just like, I think it's x3 over 3 plus 2x, 0 to 5. Now, we, well, let's, let's see, we want to get the area beneath the curve um, numerically. Okay, I'll draw this again, the same equation. And this equation is, this is x and this is y and the equation is y equals to x squared plus 2 and then we want to integrate from 0 to 5 so that we can get the area beneath the curve from uh, here to here. Now to numerically integrate this means that we we can uh, approximate the area just by using rectangles. You know, a rectangle is like that. So that means if this is um, x and this is y, so to get the area for this one, it's just x times y. I say x is, uh, okay, x is two and y is, okay, just bear with me. There's a bit of a problem to draw this. It's very unresponsive. 
Okay, let's say x is 2 and y is 3. So if you want to get the area for this one, it's just uh, 2 times 3 and you get 6, which is the area of the rectangle. But you can apply the same thing for this too. You can uh, imagine that this curve is made up of many rectangles. So that means you uh, calculate, you, you approximate the area just by uh, um, multiplying the width and the height for all of this, all of these rectangles. And then you get the area and that area here that you calculate using this way, it would approach or would be almost the same as the one that we did analytically. And this is what we call the uh, numerical Okay, this is a new numerical method. So if you require to, um, if you want to, if you want this to be more accurate, that means you have to make it even smaller. I mean, the size of the, of the rectangle even have to be a lot smaller. So maybe you need to calculate 2000 times, maybe 10,000 times so that it approaches the real value. Because if you calculate just 10 rectangles, then it might be quite inaccurate because you don't, you're not able to uh, um, get all of the curve there. For example, let's say I use on this side here. Let's say I just approximate using two rectangles like that. So it means that I, I overestimate here and I underestimate somewhere here. And if I want to make it more accurate, I'll just make it smaller and smaller until it becomes as close to the real curve as possible. And this is what I mean by numerical method. So this is actually a long intro of what I mean by a numerical method way. So as you can see, we need to we need to perform the calculation many times. So this is where coding excels and we use code to, to do the calculation for us. For example, if you want to make it more accurate, you go up to 10,000 times. It's not really a problem if you code it. You just need to increase the calculation to 10,000. If your code is right, then it will give you the area and the curve uh, a lot uh, in a more accurate than if you were to just use uh, uh, two, uh, two rectangles like, like here. For numerical method. That's just an example of a numerical method, but for this particular assignment, there's a number of numerical methods and then uh, you'll be assigned Ran randomly those numerical methods that you need to write the code for for you to submit in this assignment for this assignment so that's why i provide here some useful docs on numerical methods uh, so i could add in some more but uh, right now the one i come up with is the newton codes uh, bool method and the other is numerical integration method and the simpsons rule method so some of them is involving finding the area of the curve some is involving to find the root for example, if you want to find a root of a function of an equation, you can, for the quadratic, you, I think you did it for one of the assignment, the b squared minus 4ac, to find the root. But then there'll be more complicated uh, equations that uh, you cannot use the b squared minus 4ac um, equation. So you would have to use a different way to, to find the root. So the different way is, is numerically, and I think one of it is the, I think if I'm not mistaken, the Simpsons rule, not so sure about that, but one of the, some of the uh, functions I, some of the algorithms or the numerical methods I gave is the finding the root. So there's two things, actually. there's two ways, uh, there's two mean, um, things to solve. Either one is the integration and the other one is to find the root of uh, equation. And then um, it really depends on which question you'll get once you click on that button, uh, on the assignment button and you'll be given an equation. So it could either be uh, finding the area or finding the root. So one example, uh, this is, uh, this show one file here. This could be useful if you are given this assignment. So it gives you some background on, um, let's say if your, if your assignment is the Boole's rule, so this will give you some idea of what the Boole's rule are and then how to write it. Yeah, for example, here is to find the area under the curve. And then these are the equations that you need to code. Uh, usually the equations here look more complicated, but 
in the actual, when you actually code it, it's not that long. And then this gives actually a few types of um, numerical method. There's, there's a trapezoidal rule, there's a Simpson's one third rule, Simpson's third rule, and the Boole's rule. So um, this document will give like four types of numerical methods uh, in one document. So that's on the some useful docs on numerical methods. You can also search online on how to do this. Um, maybe you can find some codes online too, but I caution you against using that because if you use a code that you don't understand, most likely you're going to get it wrong. So it's best if you start, um, try to understand their code and then uh, use your own um, and then write it your own so that uh, you know exactly what goes on. If you just copy and paste from the, from the internet, most likely you're going to get it wrong. Because uh, I did not get this from the internet, I, I wrote the question myself, so it's more difficult for you to find it online. So coming back to this, um, to the equation, uh, go straight to it right now. The programming numerical method right now is restricted, I think, because you haven't seen this one yet. But it should be open soon. Okay, I'm going to open one to show as an example. This is the equation. I mean, this is the question. This could be different for different students and everybody has to do their own. So here we create a function to numerically integrate the equation using the trapezoid rule. So this is the equation and you want to uh, find the area beneath the equation here using this trapezoid rule. Now I give some information here, for example, a, what you need to put in a, b and n, and then the function should look like this, the name, the name should be trapezoid underscore rule. The n is the number of trapezoids. And then you write the code here. Again, you have to write a function here. You don't have to write, you, have, you don't have to define anything. You just have to write the function here. But uh, if you want to test it in MATLAB, then make sure that you define those variables in MATLAB. But here you don't have to define it. I think by now you should know what I mean. And I see define or not define, and you can press on check. Now the good thing about this, uh, this is uh, maybe a, a bit more complicated than the others, but this is the actual application of code. And then uh, you get to see why we need to use the conditional statement, why we need to use the, the loop statement and so on, and to actually solve this uh, integration problem. The, the good, another thing, good thing about this assignment is that this is a, um, you can only do it once, but you can check multiple times without any penalty. 